you know, play in with you. <laughs> Poor jaded. I think my doggies still like each other. Bailey says, I am not getting out of this car. You are taking me with. And you get to go this time. <laughs> kind of a process to get Jaden in the car anymore. Hello, I'm David Gray and the dogs and I are heading out on a uh, long overdue third backpacking trip of the 2021 season. The last trip we did was back in March to the Chia Wilderness in Alabama and then uh, in early April I took a much needed COVID escape family vacation down to Florida for spring break. I'd been planning on doing a hike somewhere maybe even on the Appalachian Trail in late April but Mother Nature had other plans and dumped about six inches of snow on us and then generally just had some really crappy cold weather all the way through the remaining part of, of April. So now it's mid-May and the original plan for May was to head to uh, Dolly Sods in West Virginia with Carl and Travis to do a trip there but there were all kinds of conflicts that we all had so that one had to be canceled. So now I'm doing a solo trip. Thought about heading down to the Appalachian Trail. Love doing the the AT in spring. There's nothing like it but Jaden is getting up there in years and I don't know how many more trips I'm going to have with him so I decided I have to do something with the dogs and I wouldn't take them to the AT. So we're going to stick around local. We're heading down to the Charles Deem Wilderness in Indiana, a little southeast of Bloomington. If you recall, that's where the uh, Peninsula Trail is that I've done a couple of times. But I'm going to do some different areas of, of the Deem Wilderness that I haven't done before and haven't captured any video. So I get some information out for people who want to travel to that area. So we're going to do what's called the Sycamore Loop and then the Axum Branch Trail. Uh, I'm not sure where we're going to end up camping. I'm not all that familiar with that area, but there's a number of established campsites, so I'm sure we'll find something. Weather-wise, it's looking a bit iffy at best. I was thinking we'd probably be actually heading down there and driving in a pouring down rain, which it's not, so maybe that's a good sign. But all three of the days we're down there, it's a 30 to 40 to 50 percent chance of rain and thunderstorms each day. And then on the last day, it's actually going to get up into the 80s, which is a little toasty for the dogs. But I think we'll be done hiking before it gets really too warm that last day. So with that, let's get on down to the Charles Deem Wilderness, a little southeast of Bloomington, Indiana, and get this little adventure started. Nasty looking weather is the uh, Peninsula Trail. That's the direction we're going to be hiking. And that's the Deem Wilderness over there. Charles C. I thought it was H. Deem Wilderness. And this is the Tower Ridge Road. It's a little bumpy. We've been on this road a few times. Six miles of this is going to be a little teeth rattling. <laughs> Love springtime in the woods. made it to the trailhead, Hickory Ridge Lookout Tower. You can actually go up there. <laughs> that's, a lot, that's a lot of steps and we got quite a few miles to hike, so I think we'll skip the climbing up to get the view. But uh, if you ever come out here, you can climb to the top and it looks like we got the place to ourselves today. That's a good sign. We might. Uh, have a little bit of solitude out here this time. So far we don't have any rain really. It was on and off kind of raining as we were driving down here, but right now it's just kind of really grungy looking like it could rain at any time. But here's where we are. That's the fire tower symbol. This was the parking lot for the Peninsula Trail, which is this guy here. But what we're going to be doing today, we'll park here. I got to figure out how we actually get to the trail, but we're going to be on the Sycamore Trail. I think what we'll do is we'll probably hike out here. This is campsite number six, number five, four, three, two, and one. And number six is the one that's supposed to be on this beautiful pond that you can see right there. So we'll head out there, maybe set up the tent just to stake a claim, and then do the entire Sycamore Trail and then head back. Tomorrow we'll head down to the Axum Trail down here. 
there's a cabin in this area and then I'll probably head back the car's gonna be here and we'll maybe go up here worst comes to worst I may end up just you know heading all the way back out to the lake if the weather's good and and do that trail again this down here this Cope Hollow Trail Martin Hollow Trail there's a horse camp here the Blackwell horse camp these get an awful lot of horse use so I'm really gonna try to stay away from that the Sycamore Trail is the only one around here that's a, a hiking only trail so that kind of makes it nice too Dogs are ready. Oops, we <laughs> got a strap to hook up. <laughs> well, we are geared up and ready to go. And I don't think it's gonna be long before I put a t-shirt on. <laughs> Man, it is pretty warm. I'd say uh, low 70s, but it is really humid. A little concerned about that with the doggies, but we're not we're not doing too many miles and it's not, not very harsh terrain, so it should be pretty easy. But I did confirm that's the way we start a lot of little road walking type stuff like that today out to this first campsite and then it's all single track back through the sycamore trail prop we're hiking day number one in the charles c deem wilderness the first significant trail junction that's the sycamore trail and then this is the terrell ridge trail more like a road that's what we're going to be walking on and then also here's campsite number one right at that junction so we're probably a quarter mile from the car so that'd be a nice sight if you were gonna <laughs> haul in some coolers and lawn chairs and everything pretty nice sight sitting logs fairly level for tents site number one on the sycamore trail not much past that first camp we came upon the second important trail junction, this one goes down to what they call the Axum Trail or the Axum Branch Trail. I'm gonna head down that way tomorrow morning on our way out. We'll just do an out and back on our way back to the car. But... Another important junction here. It's the uh, Sycamore Trail and the continuation of the Trail Ridge Trail. Half mile up here is where we'll set up camp and then we'll come back here and, and do the whole loop. I know this camera is probably making this look light, but it is really gloomy <laughs> in the woods today. It's got that look like it could just open up anytime. It's just so peaceful and there's nobody here. The sound of the birds and oh, it's beautiful. Doesn't look like it, but that's kind of a significant little sign there too. This marks the entrance to campsite number six. There is no sign or anything. That's all you're gonna get. I'm gonna go probably set the tent up, get Bailey's pack off, unload some stuff, and then we'll head out on a little day hiking on the Sycamore Loop. It was a little bit further back here than I thought. I thought it was just kind of like right off the main trail, but that's a good quarter mile back here. Campsite number six. Wow, kind of a nice little spot. Wow, pretty area. <laughs> Down into lily ponds. Here's a second site. I don't think it's nearly as nice as the first site. Uh, no view of the pond. Nice spot, but no view of the pond. You did say this is the most private, and that is absolutely the case. We're kind of on the opposite side of the pond here. Another spot here. This one is just very close to the sign also not as nice but you can see really flat pine needle type stuff real soft i saw three real campsites and then countless other places you could put a tent down a lot of spots here camp set up. I didn't leave everything there. I just left a few of the heavy items. <laughs> we're heading out now to to do the sycamore loop. I don't know if we're going to do the whole thing or part of it. We'll do a little bit of exploring around here. Show you a little more of the sycamore loop in the Dean Wilderness. Back to the Terrell, Terrell Ridge Road. Check out the cemetery up here. 
is the Terrell Family Cemetery. Which I also see one here for Axum. Uh, we're going to be heading down the Axum branch tomorrow. So made it back to the intersection with the Sycamore Trail. We're going to head down this way. 4.7 miles till we get back to the Terrell Ridge Road and see what we're getting ready to go go down. <laughs> Real flat right up till this point. We're probably half mile into the Sycamore Loop. Check out this area. Some really tall pine trees. Closing in on what obviously looks to be camp site number four. It sits in the, all those pine trees. Very cool setting. There's supposedly a creek down here. Let's see if we can get the doggy some water. I'm guessing it's right here. Hopefully there's water in it. Here is the water source for camp site number four. Doggies are all hot. It is very warm and very humid. Hitting the trail junction for campsite number three. Looks pretty nice from here. Let's check it out. Well, campsite number three. Not nearly as nice as number four. Stream is kind of over there, so it's not right on the stream either. But again, it sits in these just magnificent pine trees. Man, these things are huge. Well, looky what we found. <laughs> and there's still uh, fresh leaves on those trees. So this just happened not too long ago. But it makes me glad we weren't on that trail when that happened. Here's campsite number two. Pretty nice. <laughs> I don't think he liked that very much. <laughs> that one was for Travis. Travis doesn't like snakes very much. Yeah. I almost stepped on him. I was like, oh, whoa. <laughs> Gets your heart beating a little bit. Well, I came upon another campsite, informal. This is not marked, but it's right on the stream. They're clearly not as nice as the other ones, but uh, pretty setting. So this one's halfway between campsite two and campsite one. So we'll call it campsite one and a half. Another little watering hole for the doggies as we come up close to campsite number one. Really nice stretch. Campsites were nice. I think if I come back here, I'm gonna head out to that campsite number four. Or if that one's not available, number two would be great too. Nice secluded area and it's probably only two miles maybe. Nice little spot if you just wanna come out and do an overnight, plenty of water. Although the one thing, as I was thinking about it, not a lot of water here in May when it's been raining a lot. I'm guessing there's no water in that stream in summertime, late summer and fall. If you come out here then, I want to bring your water, plan for it. I think going up there, I think, I think we switch back, back and forth here up the ridge to the top. Oh joy, Whew. made it back. Campsite number one and roadie thing. I'll tell you what, it was a nice little hill <laughs> coming this direction. Oh, that was brutal. All right, here we go on the road walkie thing again for round two. I don't know if you can see these really well. They are uh, all over the place here. Some of them like perfectly shaped. See that one there? They look like tulips. These uh, shag bark hickory trees is what that is. They look so cool. They look like something out of a, you know, like a haunted movie kind of thing. Or Harry Potter or something, I don't know. Right at the end of this straightaway, we turn right to our camp. We made it back to camp, and the tent is still there. Man, that is a nice looking tent. Getting better at setting it up. Our home for the night, we made it back. The other thing I figured out about this pond is, there's not really good water, <laughs> and it's not easy to gather either. It's what I would call pond water, <laughs> because that's pretty much exactly what it is. All manner of stuff floating in here. Well, I guess, I guess that's what water filters are for. <laughs> There's like all kinds of stuff in here. And it's like a yellowish color. Yeah, here, dirty, 
dirty water. <laughs> That's the operative word. Uh. <laughs> I think this might be the nastiest water I've ever filtered. <laughs> We're certainly going to have to disinfect the dirty bag after this one. Oh boy. It's raining. Oh boy. There's actually something alive in there. <laughs> That's a first. Like a little pollywog or tadpole or something. Oh. Yeah. Campsite number six. Might want to bring in your water. Yeah, it started coming down a little more. We got a little shelter here though, which always helps. You can see it out there on the pond. Sound of rain in the forest. Much needed in Durox R4 with my pond water. <laughs> I left the tadpoles or pollywogs in the dirty bag. Tastes like in Durox R4. Water filters are amazing things. Look at all that amazing, pretty nice being in the woods. The doggies are all settled down and feels good to be in camp. Just kind of relaxing and settling down from the day. A little late lunch. We're having a tortilla wrap with Tuna Creations Herb and Garlic. Tapatio. Need to get the second wood. Come on, buddy. The way we, me and the dogs usually split this is, I get like one bite and I get the rest. Really hits the spot. This is the uh, bonus snake coverage time. There's a snake sitting right on that little log. Another one for Travis. Getting a little stick fire going. There's this whole thing is a bed of coal, so if I can just get things going then. Won't have to mess with it later. And we got some big sticks and got a lot of little stuff, so I should be able to keep one going here for a while. Not that we really need a fire, it's still, probably still like 72 degrees and like swamp humidity. <laughs> we got a little fire going. kind of interesting. I've never seen that. It's kind of like an add-on. So she was actually moved to a different cemetery. It's cheddar cheese spread rehydration moment. Let that go for about an hour and uh, the doggies and I will be doing some Packet gourmet cheddar cheese spread on Ritz crackers. Not very much, but just enough for an appetizer. Perfect. All right, well, it is the uh, cheddar cheese spread moment. Solo for the first time in a long time. I guess not exactly solo, because I've got my canine companions. Oh. Jaden's even going to make an appearance. <laughs> uh, we've got this blazing fire going, and the last thing in the world I need right now is a blazing fire, because it is like smoking hot. <laughs> but it gives you something to do. It's kind of like nature TV, and you can mess with it. And you're on a solo backpacking trip. There's a lot of free time for you to just kind of think. <laughs> the cheddar cheese spread is 
absolutely perfectly rehydrated here. Don't take my... Oh, that's pretty good, Bailey. One for me. Hmm. Oh, man. I don't know how many times I've had that. The first time ever was right here in the Dean Wilderness, over that way a bit, on the Peninsula Trail in 2010, and it's never gotten old. <laughs> You got the eyebrow thing going back and forth. <laughs> oh, you got somebody shooting in the woods. Believe it or not, dinner tonight is a USDA Prime New York strip steak. Had them in the freezer and decided to bring one along for this trip. Got my little skillet that we're going to be using here, so I'll go ahead and spice it up. This is like my cooking show, right? <laughs> it should do an outdoor cookie show. There we go. <laughs> That's the sound of flavor. <laughs> I am really looking forward to this. Yeah, it just really kind of changes the whole complexion. To have something like this to look forward to on the first night is really special. The only thing better than how that looks is how it's smelling from right here. <laughs> That's going to be really good. All kinds of critters seem to have woken up just in time for dinner. <laughs> oh, God. A little touch beyond medium rare, but I think the rest of it is actually going to be medium rare. Just like Mountain House. <laughs> oh, man, what a, what a treat in the backcountry. Don't look at me like you're gonna chew off my leg. I'll give you some, just hang on a second. Let me... Wow, <laughs> that a treat. Getting noisy and noisy. All right, when we're getting ready to go to bed. Trying to go to sleep. <laughs> the bugs have other plans for us. It's every bit as loud as it probably sounds like. <laughs> it's like trying to go to sleep with a rock concert of bugs going on outside. Good first day. Pretty hot, pretty humid. I think it wore the dogs out, wore me out a little bit. Now uh, we put in, I don't know, a total by the time we got done with all the little side excursions of the cemetery and everything, probably close to 10 miles. So. Is all around. That was about as close to a sleepless night as I think I've ever had. This little pond we parked ourselves next to was alive with noise. It was like a full-on rock concert of uh, crickets and frogs and all manner of things, and it went on uh, all night long. It was not a uh, restful night's sleep, to say the least. We're going on day number two. I'm not really sure what day number two is going to hold for us. We're going to head down to that Axley branch, um, take a look for the cabin down there. And then I was thinking about heading over to the Peninsula Trail. Plans for today are up in the air right now, but we will get the day started. Getting started on day number two in the Charles Beam Wilderness. Figured a good way to start it, as always, is maybe with some Dunkin' Donuts coffee before the rain comes in. First priority every morning, even before my Dunkin' Donuts coffee, is to feed the doggies. No, stay away. Bailey, come on. Let me to... deliver. I've delivered Jaden's.
I am loving my new uh, MSR stove. I can't remember what the name of it is though. But it's got the little built-in striker thing and the striker seems to work great. See? The stove did a really fine job of cooking my New York strip steak last night. So <laughs> that was the first use for it. So I'll always remember that. Second use, Dunkin' Donuts coffee. That's not bad for a follow-up engagement. Oh. Dunkin' Donuts coffee after a mostly sleepless night in the very damp and humid Dean Wilderness in Indiana. But this always makes up for even the roughest of nights. Oh, man. That is, without a doubt, my favorite part of every camping trip is, I think you've picked up on by now, but there is just nothing better than a nice cup of hot coffee in the morning when you're out in the woods, listening to the sounds of nature, hoping you don't get rained on, but man, this makes it all right. And breakfast this morning is, you guessed it, honey punches of oats with Nito. And this is just so satisfying and so easy. Which is about that much. You got yourself breakfast. Well, we are geared up and ready to go. And by we, I mean me. I got Bailey's pack on here. There's nothing in it. I figured it'd just keep her a little cooler today. What we're gonna do is head back uh, the Terrell Ridge Road over to the Axley uh, Branch cutoff trail and head down to the bottom of there and check out the cabin and everything that's down there. I think it's probably a really pretty area. There we are hiking on day number two in the Dean Wilderness. Heading back towards the car and we'll see what the rest of the day has for us after that. It is so dark and gloomy in the woods today. Yes. It's just like it could come pouring down rain anytime. I saw two two day hikers yesterday. That's the only people we've seen the entire time we're out here. I didn't think we'd it would be crowded, but I didn't think it would be completely empty either. And see us, that's our little orange arrow and near the Axum Branch Trail, that's where we're gonna go. So I'm gonna come down to about this area. I think that's where the cabin is. So we'll go explore down in there. This is the Axum Trail. So we're gonna head down this way. We've passed this spot now. This is the third time. There's a the Axum family, ruins of the Axum family. Cabin is down here and stream. And I think it'll be really pretty. I wanna complete this. I've never been on this trail, so. We're exploring new areas of the Dean Wilderness on this hike. We're heading right down this ridge. It's been really gentle downhill so far, which has been pleasant, but I think it's gonna get a little more significantly downhill as we kind of approach the bottom. But I think this kind of is the bottom. Well, that's the trail we came from, and that's the trail we're going on. Long switchbacks, but it's not too bad. Well, I am guessing that this is the Axum branch. And again, one thing I would caution people about if you come out this way is, here we are in mid-May when we've had a lot of rain and there's no water in it. But that little be a little warning to you if you come out here like in the summertime or something. Kind of looking for the cabin, but we've started to climb up the other side of the ridge, which has me a little concerned. Climbed quite a ways away from the creek and this has taken us way away from where we want to go. <laughs> so I'll go a little bit further, but this doesn't look too encouraging. I may go back down to the creek and try that side trail that looked like a really highly traveled trail. Maybe that goes out to the cabin. That would make more sense. I think we'll go up here a little further. You can see we're kind of up on the hill away from the branch, but it goes downhill right up in here. And maybe that's the location of the cabin. That's about another, I don't know, 500,000 feet in front of us. So we'll go up there and see what we find. Switch back and down 
to the bottom down there and that area down there looks a lot more encouraging for the ruins of an old cabin. I'll go at least that far. If we start going uphill again, I'm going to turn around. All right, well, I hate to do it, but we got to turn back. We're now starting to go. We're beyond that whole area, well beyond that whole area where I thought there might be a cabin. And now we're heading back up the ridge. I'm not going to wander around all over. We've already gone, we've already gone two and a half. Now we got to go two and a half back the other way. So that's a whole lot more miles than I was planning on this little side excursion. I am sorry about that, but that's the kind of thing that gives you a reason to come back for another visit with GPS coordinates in hand next time. The old geese are cooling off. I don't know if this is the Axum branch or a branch of the Axum branch. <laughs> We've now gone five miles. When I was planning on being here at about three, maybe. And we still got about a mile to go, and that was just basically all up and down. I wasn't planning on that to get the day started, so we'll be at about six miles by the time we get back to the car. I'm gonna be needing to do some thinking about where we go from there. Jaden's dragging a little bit here. Got a little gimpy thing going on. I made it to the uh, Sycamore Trail, campsite number one. We made it back to the car, and the car is intact. When you park your car in these backcountry parking lots out in the middle of nowhere, you never really quite know what to expect, and I've heard enough horror stories that when I come back, and it's intact, it's always a good feeling. We're at about six miles for the day already. The sun's starting to poke out, the temperature's going up. It's supposed to be 82 degrees today and high humidity. And I don't think I can ask the dogs to do another six miles out on the Peninsula Trail. So we're gonna call it a trip at this point. And with that, the third backpacking trip of the 2021 season, the Charles Deem Wilderness in Indiana is in the books. Didn't exactly go as planned, although I have to admit my plan was pretty darn loose going into it. But we did accomplish what I set out to do on this trip, which was to explore an entirely different part of the Dean Wilderness and capture some video and share some information for anybody who might be planning on coming back to this Sycamore Trail area. This video should give you some really good information on campgrounds, what the campgrounds are like, water availability, trail conditions, you know, the whole thing, and should make it a little more comfortable experience if you've never been here before. The dogs and I were able to come out and experience two really nice days in the woods in the springtime in Indiana with the sounds of nature and sitting by the campfire and sharing that wonderful prime New York strip at the fire last night. That was quite an experience. We didn't accomplish everything we set out to do. We weren't able to find the Axum cabin and we added about an extra four miles of hiking to our day in the process but that just gives us a reason to come back the next time better informed and better prepared. The Deem Wilderness, beautiful area, trip didn't go exactly as planned but it was still a great hike.